This is the difference between debate, even aggressive debate, debate, and censorship. It is one thing to attack Kamala Harris for, quote, destroying the country, end quote, and quite another to say that President Trump should be eliminated. It is one thing to criticize overheated rhetoric and another to say that a former president has invited an assassination on himself. It is one thing to say that Donald J. Trump's arguments about the election of 2020 are wrong. It is another thing to attempt to remove him from the ballot over it. It is one thing to say that pets are not, in fact, being eaten, and other thing, another thing to say that anyone who disagrees is trying to murder people. Dissent, even vigorous dissent, is a great tradition in the United States. Censorship is not. For the next seven weeks of this campaign, I will vigorously defend your right to speak your mind, says J.D. Vance. He goes on to say, I believe you have every right to criticize me and Donald Trump, even if you say terrible or untrue things about us. But when I ask you to tone down the rhetoric, it is not about being nice or citizens have every right to be mean, even if I don't like it or empty platitudes. Instead, I'm asking for all of us to reject censorship, reject the idea that you can control what the other people think and say. Embrace the per uh, persuasion of your fellow citizens over silencing them, either through the powers of big tech or through moral blackmail. I think this will make our public debate much better. But there's something else. Reject censorship and you reject political violence. Embrace censorship and you will inevitably embrace violence on its behalf. The reason is simple. The logic of censorship leads directly to one place. For there is only one way to permanently silence a human being. Put a bullet in his brain. Mm -hmm.